Hey everyone, Jamie Maloney here, host of That Business Show 2.0, the real estate edition, where each Thursday we talk nothing but real estate. And so if you're familiar with the program, you know each and every weekday morning we talk with different business owners and entrepreneurs. But part of the new direction of the show, uh, since we've moved off of radio, is to talk a little bit about my business uh, once a week, which again is real estate, as I am a realtor with Coldwell Banker and would love to be able to assist you with buying or selling a home anywhere in the uh, country. If you're Tampa Bay based, I can help you uh, personally. Uh, but if you're anywhere in the country, again, we have a vast relocation and referral network. So we'd be happy to pair you up with a, a qualified uh, real estate agent uh, from our brokerage. And the good thing about using agents from uh, those referral and those relocation networks is agents have to qualify and they have to maintain a certain level of customer service to even remain eligible for those leads. And so getting an agent through a relocation uh, service, uh, you're definitely going to get a, uh, a qualified agent. You're going to get an agent with something to lose if they don't service uh, you properly. And so definitely uh, use that as a, a resource uh, for finding uh, your next home, whether it is buying or selling. Again, you know, uh, you know, realtors uh, source leads from a, a number of different uh, locations. And on this segment, I'm going to talk a little bit about what it is to be a realtor, how to become a real estate agent, how to sustain yourself as a real estate agent and lead sources, you know, being, uh, you know, the lifeblood of any business, no different from real estate. Uh, you know, you go into the business and there is no, uh, there is no salary. There is no, uh, um, uh, you know, income that you're going to make unless you make a, a sale. And so you're dependent upon, you know, your own sphere of influence and your ability to generate leads in this uh, business. Uh, as with any uh, uh, industry out there, you know, sales is where, you know, the opportunity to earn the most income comes from. You know, realtors can make, you know, on average, you know, you know, anywhere from 30000 to $3 million a year. It's really up to them how much they want to earn, how much they want to work. But it all comes down to their ability to source business and become a, you know, a service provider that is known for a certain niche. So going back to, you know, the uh, promotion there I was talking about in the uh, top of the uh, segment there, you know, relocation and referral uh, leads are one of the sources that real estate agents get their business from. So if you were to listening to me in uh, Oregon, for uh, for instance, and you send me a message and say, Jamie, I'm in Oregon and I'd like to uh, sell my home. Can you help me out? I would then turn that lead over to our relocation uh, director. Your information would go into a database and then an agent in uh, Oregon uh, in that area would uh, get the uh, listing through their broker at uh, a coal banker brokerage in our situation. Other companies have uh, those uh, uh, relocation and referral networks as well. The, the Century 21s and the Remaxes and the Keller Williams all have those types of uh, systems. But the advantage to you as the uh, consumer is that you're getting an agent that number one, had to qualify for getting that lead. And number two, if you complain about their service, they're gonna get tossed out of the relocation and referral network. And for many realtors that are in those, uh, in the, that arena of uh, lead sourcing, that is their business because a lot of leads come through uh, relocation uh, services. And so you're going to get a quality agent uh, through that. So take advantage of that. I've got a couple of different websites set up to assist you. Uh, again, that home valuation, Dot com where if you're in Tampa Bay, I'll provide you with a, a free uh, home valuation uh, myself, or if you're uh, in another uh, area, again, we'll, we'll connect you with a, a real estate agent uh, who can provide that uh, for you. Also, thathomesearch.com uh, will connect you with a uh, agent and help you uh, find a home uh, to uh, buy. And now, uh, right now, is a difficult time out there to find some inventory. Uh, as uh, many people know, uh, inventory uh, very, uh, very tight. Uh, one of the best seller markets out there in uh, in recent uh, times. And so it's definitely a seller's advantage out there, but if you have to buy a home, you know, you gotta buy a home. So uh, definitely uh, reach out to uh, myself or uh, my team and we'd be happy to uh, to help you out. Uh, an article came out uh, this uh, past week in the uh, Tampa Bay Times, our local newspaper, about, you know, what's going on in the uh, Tampa Bay real estate market. Uh, values up uh, 10 to 12% uh, year over year in, in Hillsborough County. Uh, Hernando and Pasco seeing uh, even higher growth and uh, and appreciation uh, because it's it's just a cheaper area overall and so it has more room to grow in Tampa Bay right now with a thousand uh, people you know uh, you know a, a month uh, or actually I think a day moving into into this area is really set to uh, to grow and compared to other major metros it's it's kind of shocking to you know see the values in other major cities compared to Tampa Bay and that's why we're getting so much uh, outside investment so much demand from um, 
from uh, investment groups in hedge funds is because our median price point is like what 160 170,000 uh, depending on uh, you know the area of Tampa Bay uh, that you're in you look in other major cities and the median price point is three four even five hundred fifty thousand dollars when I talked to a broker from uh, San Diego a, a few weeks ago or not San Diego but a uh, Seattle but uh, in San Diego just as pricey I'm sure the price point uh, in San Diego is four or five hundred thousand dollars for a uh, first time uh, for a, an entry level home. And so just incredible uh, the potential uh, for uh, values increases in Tampa Bay. And you know, you go down to Miami, which is just three and a half hours, you know, to the southeast of us, and you see the development and you see the sky rises that are going up. And Tampa Bay being a port uh, a city, being a major metropolitan area, baseball, football teams over, you know, a couple million or more in the entire metro. It's definitely going to be an area of, of, of value appreciation in the coming years. And so if you're considering moving, consider Tampa Bay as a, as a location for your uh, for your move. It's a great community, uh, great weather, and uh, you know beaches uh, all around. You've got Orlando right down the road for uh, Disney World and uh, Universal Studios. Miami, just three hours away. Jacksonville, just three hours away. If you're a University of Florida fan, Gators are just two hours north. If you like the Seminoles, they're about three hours north up in Tallahassee. But Tampa Bay is a growing community, uh, values increasing uh, very, very uh, healthily compared to uh, the overall um, uh, nation. Uh, Pasco and Hernando County is seeing growth of uh, uh, 12 to 15 percent year over year. And again, that's the direction of the city as it moves uh, northward into that into that area. And again, values are you know generally lower up there because it's a sparser area. You also have a lower tax rate. You have lower insurance rates up there. Uh, communities uh, more and more don't have uh, CDDs, which are known as community development districts uh, inside of them. And so they have a uh, cheaper uh, you know, base of a price, price base and more and more first time buyers are uh, sending up uh, to that area of Tampa Bay. So uh, Pasco and Hernando County, a great place to live with a close proximity uh, just down the highways into the uh, Tampa Bay region. But I want to get back uh, to what I was talking about at the top of the uh, hour, you know, what it is to be a real estate agent, how to become a real estate agent, how to sustain yourself in the business. So many people come into real estate with the expectation that, uh, you know, they're going to make, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. But, it, you know, it is the highest uh, grossed, uh, grossing earnings uh, company, I mean, business that you can be in without a college degree. You don't need a college degree to get into uh, real estate. And many people are in this business uh, without a college degree. I honestly wish they would have a little bit more uh, barriers to entry uh, for this business. But uh, in Florida, the uh, barriers to entry are very, uh, very limited. And somebody could have a real estate license in as little as two, uh, three months, depending on how quickly they work through the course. But uh, to get a real estate license, uh, the first step is to, uh, you know, uh, take the, uh, the, uh, the course, the uh, 63 hour real estate pre-licensing, uh, real estate associate pre-licensing course. A couple of different places uh, give those. The one I've always used and recommended is the uh, Bob Hogue School of Real Estate. Uh, Bob uh, Hogue, spelled H-O-G-U-E, I think it's bobhogue.com will get you to that, but a simple Google search will pull that up for you. Enroll in that, you can do it uh, in the classroom or you can do it online. If you do it in the classroom, you'll spend 63 hours uh, in the classroom. If you do it online and you are a quick learner, you can do it in as little as probably 20 hours. You don't have to physically stand in or stay in front of the computer for 63 hours. But if you're in the uh, classroom, uh, that's how long it takes. Uh, when I did the uh, course, you know, some 12 years ago, uh, I was in the classroom and uh, the online courses weren't, weren't uh, set up and available uh, just yet. So I spent the time in the classroom Room. Uh, I prefer uh, online now whenever I do the uh, continuing education uh, or the other courses that go along with uh, real estate. Uh, online you can knock them out very quickly and a lot of it is repetitive information when you get onto the continuing education courses. Uh, it's just a repeat of the course that you took already. There's not a lot of new information. There's some changes in laws and contracts uh, that come about but they usually just redrive uh, some of the basic uh, uh, values and information back into the uh, real estate agents on those uh, continuing education courses. 
So enroll in that, and at the same time, you're going to make application to the state uh, to be for a license. Uh, the license is controlled through the uh, Division of Business and Professional Regulation, the DBPR, which is the uh, licensing authority for, I, I'm assuming, I guess, all industries in, in Florida, from cosmetologists uh, to, to real estate agents to, to insurance agents. And so the DBPR will then uh, do a, a background check on yourself, and you'll be uh, required to submit uh, fingerprints uh, to them as well. They do electronic fingerprinting today, and so you go to a fingerprinting service and uh, do that. And uh, altogether, that entire cost uh, for the course course runs around three hundred to four hundred dollars. The application to the state costs, I think, one hundred and seventy-five dollars or something uh, for that. The application uh, to the state uh, will take about probably uh, three to four weeks. And when you do that, they'll send you back a notice saying the what is deficient. And so if you haven't finished the course yet, they'll be waiting on the course. They'll be waiting on the fingerprints uh, and the uh, background check. And then ultimately, the final step is to take the state exam. So after you finish the uh, state, I mean, sorry, the, uh, the online course or the uh, course, if you go uh, in the classroom, you then apply uh, to take the uh, state exam, which is given all, pretty much every day at the Promisor uh, offices. And that is really the only real barrier to entry to getting into real estate. A lot of people struggle with that test. They take the online course and the online test, and it's a fairly simple test, and they assume that the online state test, or I'm sorry, the state test is similar, and it, it strips up a lot of people. And so that's about the only real barrier to enter. I've seen people take that four and five times and not pass it. I was fortunate enough to you know, pass it on my first try, but you know, I did study and put a effort into it. And so that's it. After that, you become a real estate agent and you have no idea what to do as a real estate agent. And uh, they, because uh, the real estate schools do not prepare you to be a realtor. They teach you a bunch of law, but they don't teach you how to write contracts and the source leads. And so I'll talk a little bit about that when we come back from the break. So you're currently listening to the real estate edition of That Business Show 2.0. I am your host, Jamie Maloney. New episodes of this program air every Thursday at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and then made available on iTunes and on YouTube. So we'll be back in a moment. Here's our primary business is hardwood flooring, although we are remodelers for kitchen, bath, and general construction. We operate a fleet of shop at home vans that have all the flooring type products, hardwood flooring, laminate flooring, tiles, stone, what have you. So we're able to come out first with products in our vehicles and take a look at the setting, how the colors will work, and then to be able to come up with some options and ideas for you. If that's not good enough, we have a large distribution center that we inventory product and have a nice display area. Jackie Skelton from JR World Travel here. If you travel, you need a licensed professional travel consultant, not a computer. Your licensed professional consultant can get you more for your time and your money. Value for your money and experience, not marketing salesmanship. When you're sick, you call the doctor. When you need legal advice, you call an attorney. So the next time you want to go on any type of travel, call your licensed professional travel consultant who actually represents you. We specialise in group travel, family reunions, weddings, to escorting large groups or making special arrangements for the disabled. Please call 844 249 0190. We are a full service travel consultancy offering worldwide concierge service. 
air, land, sea, rivers, resorts, locally, nationally and internationally. Remember that number, 844-249-0190. And welcome back to That Business Show 2.0, the real estate edition, where each Thursday at 7 a.m. we talk about my business, which is real estate. So again, if you're in the Tampa Bay region, love to help you out with buying or selling a home. You can reach out to me uh, through thathomesearch.com or thathomevaluation.com for a buying or selling home. Uh, my general real estate website, just go to jamiemaloney.com and it'll take you over to my real estate uh, profile. So that site uh, now separated from thatbusinessnetwork.com where all new shows of uh, That Business Show 2.0 are aired each weekday morning at 7 a.m. So again, those sites used to be one in the same, no longer as I work to uh, differentiate the uh, show from my real estate business, two separate things uh, that I have uh, in uh, in business here in uh, my uh, career. So getting back to uh, what I was talking about, becoming a real estate agent, what it is to be a real estate agent, how to sustain yourself as a real estate agent. And so you've got uh, the real estate license, you've taken the uh, online or the uh, the in-class in uh, 63 hour course, you've gotten the fingerprints done, you've had the background check done, uh, you've now applied to the state uh, and, and passed the, the course. The one of the requirements uh, uh, pre uh, uh, setup to that is that uh, you are 18 years old, and I think you got to be a United States citizen. Maybe you don't. Uh, it's pretty uh, lax on uh, uh, standards uh, to become a real estate uh, agent. So you've got that, and the next step is to then pick a, a brokerage. Now, when real estate was uh, very uh, lucrative uh, in 2004, 5, and 6, it was not uncommon for brokerages to pay for people to be put through uh, real estate school. And that's not so common, but you can find that out there if you talk to different brokerages and stuff. So it is a possibility that some of them may pay to put you through real estate school. Again, it's an investment for them of only about three or four or five hundred dollars, and uh, they get you know an agent who you know after one sell, you know they're, they're going to get paid back uh, for that. And so talk to some brokerages. Uh, it may be possible to get uh, that paid for. But the next step then is to again find a, a broker that you're uh, comfortable with. Now this is a there's a lot of different models out there in uh, in the real estate to marketplace. Uh, you have very uh, low uh, commissions with a lot of support. You have very high commissions with little supports, and you have a lot of stuff uh, in between. And so this is what I always advise agents to do. You're going to come out of real estate school, and you're going to be a buyer agent. You're probably not going to have uh, the the sphere of influence to be a sustainable listing agent. You'll probably be listing your friends and family's homes uh, in that first year. Now, long-term listing agent is where you want to get to, but in the beginning, you're going to become a buyer agent, and it really doesn't matter what brokerage you go to as a buyer agent. And so what I recommend is that you go to a brokerage that has a good educational program. It doesn't necessarily have to be one of the major ones, such as Codal Banker, Keller Williams, Remax. Those have great uh, um, educational programs, but there's a lot of you know, smaller mom and pops that have you know, educational programs associated with them. So it's important that you go to a brokerage that has some type of educational program because you're going to be clueless when you come out of real estate school. You're not going to know how to write a contract. You're not going to know about all the different addendums, all the different scenarios. You're not going to know about closing procedures, contract procedures, escrow procedures, and all that stuff is going to overwhelm you. And if you make a, if you screw up, you can cost somebody, you know, dearly. And you're also dealing with, you know, the major number one investment most people will make in their entire lives. And that is, you know, their, their house. And so it's important to know what you're doing. And so go to a brokerage that has an educational program. And I always recommend that you, in the beginning, go to a brokerage that has a higher commission split. Uh, because again, as a buyer agent, you're not going to be doing marketing services for listings. You're just gonna be driving people around and showing them homes. And so if you're giving up a large portion of your commission to a brokerage to do that, then the brokerage is winning in that situation because they're not spending marketing dollars to advertise a, a home, which is where a, a large percentage of uh, those, those split dollars uh, that come into a brokerage will go to. 
And so, yes, they're spending marketing dollars to source buyers. And, you know, you may or may not be taking leads from, from your broker. You may be sourcing um, them yourself. But regardless, as a buyer agent, and even if you're an established uh, agent in the marketplace, it doesn't make sense to be with a broker that's paying you a 50, 60, 70% uh, commission split when you're a buyer agent and not listing any properties because they're not giving you a lot of support uh, when you're out there sourcing your own business, driving people around in your own car, spending your own money on gas and taking them to the different properties and finding the properties online, which anybody can do. Now, the idea though to sustain yourself in real estate is to become a listing agent because listings generate buyer leads and you have the opportunity to earn both sides of a commission when you are a listing agent. And so as you're beginning to develop as a real estate agent, you want to be, you know, you want to see yourself becoming a, you know, a local listing broker for a community or a, an area of, of your community where people associate you with, whether it's a large master plan community with thousands of homes, maybe it's a certain area of town, but it's something that should be identifiable and recognizable. For instance, uh, South Tampa in Tampa is known as a, a community, but it's not an actual defined uh, neighborhood such as a Fishhawk Ranch, which is a subdivision. But both of those are excellent places to begin to market yourself as a listing agent if you're in the Tampa Bay region. You can become, I am the go-to listing agent, uh, go-to resource, real estate resource in Fishhawk, or I am the go-to resource in South Tampa. So whatever community that you live in, whether you live in Boston, or you live in Los Angeles, there are you know communities that are known by certain names. So you wanna brand yourself as a representative of that community and become the go-to source for, that, uh, uh, for those homeowners to list your homes. That will sustain yourself over the long term in real estate. If you are a buyer agent, you only have the chance to earn one side of a deal, so you're not gonna get those deals where you earn both sides of, of the deal, and I'll explain that here in just a minute, but you're going to grow a portfolio of properties and you're gonna become associated with uh, you know a neighborhood. And the most valuable lead source there is in this business is real estate sign calls. It's, there's all kinds of amazing technology out there and complicated algorithms that are written to try and get you, the consumer, to call you know real estate agent uh, Joe Schmo. But the number one source of leads is the sign in the yard still, and that's never going to change. And so the more signs you have in the front of your listings, the more leads you're going to get and the more quality leads you're going to get. I want to emphasize quality leads because the worst source of real estate leads is the internet. There are so many sites out there that are trying to capture your information and people go on real estate sites all the time and peruse listings and you know they'll put the box, yeah, send me some more information. Those are the worst types of leads. Those, those buyers and sellers are in the very entry level stages of buying or selling. The typical buyer or seller takes six months uh, to a year before they commit to the process. And those leads that come in through the internet are the worst of the worst. A lot of times, uh, you know, you, the real estate agent, will try to contact them. They won't call you back. They won't respond to any emails. It, it's really a low quality lead. But when you get somebody that picks up the phone and calls you from the sign, that right there is a very, uh, very high quality lead. And those convert very well. They, you may not convert them on that particular listing. They may be calling about, you know, 123 Main Street, which is your listing but you may not sell them that one, but they are going to buy something. They are engaged and they are ready to buy because they picked up the phone. You'd be surprised at you know, what the, the internet has done to, uh, to our culture. It's made us you know, so dependent upon instant information and instant return that we've forgotten about how important the phone can be. And so we're constantly tied to the internet and those leads that come in through online. And this speaks true through, uh, through a lot of businesses. The phone, when people pick up the phone and call you, that shows interest. And so that right there will help sustain you as a real estate agent with the more signs that you have in the yard because now you're gonna get buyers that call you and you have the opportunity to earn both sides of the deal. 
So how do real estate agents get paid? They get paid a commission based on a sales price. And this is where real estate kind of goes a little bit awry in, in, in representation and, and how real estate agents are compensated. And I'll explain that here in a second. But the commission is paid by the seller. So person buying a home doesn't have to pay a, an agent to, uh, to close on a property. Although statistically and historically uh, speaking, if you look at the, you know, the, the prices of homes and for agents, uh, for buyers that use agents, you'll see that agents that, or sellers that were represented by agents, those buyers pay more for the property. And so you can make the argument, as many people do, that the buyer pays the commission through the higher sales price of the property. That's one of the arguments out there. And it makes sense. Uh, when sellers uh, do not sell their properties through uh, agents, uh, they usually get a lower sales price. And so it could be argued then that the, the, uh, the seller, or I mean that the buyer did not pay the uh, commission in that situation. Commissions are negotiable. There is no standard uh, commission uh, base. Uh, brokers can charge anywhere from 1% to uh, you know 100%. There is, there's no, there's no uh, standard that uh, you have to uh, charge. You'll find multiple listing services out there who will just, or listing brokers who use just uh, listing services to put your home in the MLS for flat fees of 100 bucks or uh, you know 1%. Uh, you'll find others that have you know reduced commission models where you know you're responsible for showing the home. They don't show the home and you'll pay X commission. Standard commission uh, across the industry is uh, 6%. Uh, when you get into your upper level uh, price points, your higher uh, markets like you know out in LA or New York City, and then you get in four and a half, five percent range. Uh, but even around here, you've got agents that will charge you know seven percent. And when you get into commercial brokerage, you'll get into you know even eight and nine percent uh, commissions. Um, it's like, but again, everything is negotiable, and that commission is split between the buyer and buyer's agent and the listing agent. Now, you know, nice fair listing agents will split a 6% commission, three and three. But as a seller, you need to make sure that you know how your listing agent is splitting the commission because they could be keeping 4% and only offering 2% as a co-brokering commission inside the multiple listing service. And so what does that mean uh, for you as a seller? That means buyer agents are not going to show your home as readily as the next home that is similar to yours because the commission is lower. So make sure inside the listing agreement it should be disclosed as to how the commission is split between the listing agent and the selling agent. And so make sure it's split at least 50-50. Uh, make sure it's not split in favor of your listing agent or else you're putting yourself at a disadvantage. And any listing agent that practices that is really does not have your interests in mind. So currently listening to the real estate edition of that business show 2.0, we're talking about you know what it is to be a real estate agent, how to become a real estate agent, how to sustain yourself in real estate. And just a moment ago, I talked about kind of the disparity that exists uh, with regard to representation in real estate uh, and how real estate agents are compensated. And I'll explain that a little bit more when we come back from the break. On That Business Show 2.0, I'm your host, Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. Hi, welcome to Yeagers. We just want to take a minute and show you what we're all about. Uh, at Yeagers, our primary business is hardwood flooring, although we are remodelers for kitchen, bath, and general construction. We operate a fleet of shop-at-home vans that have all the flooring-type products, hardwood flooring, laminate flooring, tiles, stone, what have you. So we're able to come out first with products in our vehicles and take a look at the setting, how the colors will work, and then to be able to come up with some options and ideas for you. If that's not good enough, we have a large distribution center that we inventory product and have a nice display area. Jackie Skelton from JR World Travel here. If you travel, you need a licensed professional travel consultant, not a computer. Your licensed professional consultant can get you more for your time and your money. Value for your money and experience, not marketing salesmanship. When you're sick, you call the doctor. When you need legal advice, you call an attorney. So the next time you want to go on any type of travel, call your licensed professional travel consultant who actually represents you. We specialise in group travel, family reunions, weddings, to escorting large groups or making special arrangements for the disabled. Please call 844 249 0190. We are a full service travel consultancy offering worldwide concierge service. Air, land, sea, rivers, resorts, 
locally, nationally and internationally. Remember that number, 844 249 Welcome back to That Business Show 2.0, the real estate edition where business becomes show business. New episodes of the real estate edition air every weekday morning at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on our website, thatbusinessnetwork.com. And also we have a Facebook page set up for just my real estate business as well. So if you go to Facebook and you search Jamie Maloney Real Estate, it'll pull up the real estate page. And so a new site that we've been developing over the last year. And I'd appreciate it if you could give a like to the page. And we put all the real estate related shows and topics up there on that fan book fan page in addition to the uh, Facebook fan page over at uh, That Business Show. And if you didn't know, we do air the show uh, live each and every morning on Facebook, uh, given that we don't have uh, some uh, a glitch with the uh, with the uh, site. Um, the Facebook can be a little glitchy with uh, the airing inside Facebook. Otherwise, so it's always available on thatbusinessnetwork.com and also on webeamtv.com each and every weekday morning, 7 a.m., and then made available on demand 24-7 on iTunes and on our YouTube channel, as well as other multiple podcasting sites. So wherever it is that you're listening or viewing the program, we greatly appreciate it. Uh, we got a lot of listeners and followers on SoundCloud, uh, on Spreaker, on TuneIn, Player FM, a lot of different sites uh, to uh, find the uh, program. So again, thank you to all the uh, listeners and all the uh, viewers that uh, tune in, uh, however often it is that you listen to the program. We greatly appreciate it. We'd love for you to leave us a review too on iTunes. That helps the uh, show grow and get exposed to more and more listeners. So on iTunes, look up the program. It's also available as a video cast on there too. So leave a comment on uh, both of them to help the uh, show grow and give us some feedback too. We'd love to hear what it is that you like about the show, what it is that you don't like about the show and how it is so we can help get you better information as a listener to help grow or start your own business or inspire you to even start your own business. So on today's program, we're talking about, you know, becoming a real estate agent, sustaining yourself in business, lead sources, and how to, you know, grow as a real estate uh, agent in this business. And you come, uh, real estate is probably one of the most backwards industries uh, that uh, has formed. And for being the, one of the largest industries out there, it's, it's amazing how this uh, business has come together. Uh, years ago, uh, you, know, it, you know, real estate agents are one of the most uh, or least trusted uh, industries. They rank up there with lawyers and, and accountants in terms of the least trusted uh, people inside an industry. And really where that distrust has come from, uh, one, the low barrier to entry it makes it a haven for unscrupulous individuals to get in easily, uneducated individuals to get in uh, easily. And so sometimes it's just a matter of, you know, poor barriers to entry uh, in the industry. But nonetheless, you know, that is the fault of the real estate agency, a real estate industry for allowing that. When real estate, uh, you know, was first, uh, you know, uh, put into practice some, you know, 150 uh, years ago, it was common for a real estate broker to actually take possession of the property and then sell the home, sort of the way uh, you know stockbrokers uh, will do. They actually buy the product and then they'll, they'll sell the product. Obviously, that doesn't make sense in today's uh, real estate uh, marketplace. It didn't make sense for very long back in the day either because it took a substantial amount of capital for a, a real estate broker to be able to buy your house and then sell it uh, to, a, uh, to a buyer. And so real estate brokers really beat up home sellers on the price to get those homes very low to be able to make a substantial uh, profit on the, on the sale of the property to, to the buyers. And so real estate agents developed, uh, you know, uh, very uh, unscrupulous uh, techniques, uh, very uh, dishonest techniques, and they developed a very bad reputation for what they did to the community in the early uh, 1900s and late 1800s as real estate brokerages or, or as, real, as the practice of real estate brokerage was developing. Today, real estate brokers, it is practiced by, you know, you pay a commission to your real estate agent, your seller, and the seller uh, compensates you as the listing agent 
with a higher uh, commission if you sell the home for more money. So if you sell a $100,000 home and the commission is uh, 6%, that's $6,000. But if you sell it for $200,000, then that's uh, you know uh, uh, $12,000. And so the more money that you sell a home for, the more commission that you're going to get. And so it makes sense from a listing agent side or a seller side that the listing agent gets more money when they sell the home. Where it doesn't make sense, though, is that the selling agent is also compensated for getting a higher price for the seller, whereas it is the idea of the uh, buyer's agent to get the home for less for their agent uh, or for their, uh, for their uh, uh, client, I should say. But that's not what has happened. So when the price goes up, commission goes up for both the buying and the selling agent. And so it doesn't make sense that, you know, the selling agent should somehow be rewarded for the percentage of a discount that they got off of the marketed price for their client, but that's not that's just not what happened. So just another area of disparity that exists inside our industry that doesn't make sense in the way that that real estate has come together. And so real estate is just, uh, you know, the way this is, you know, come together has to do a lot with, you know, uh, that real estate is seen as a local market, that a lot of real estate agents uh, that specialize uh, in this uh, in this industry, you know they they grew up in a community. They know the community very well, and so you've had all these little subsects of you know groups that have formed. And you know, not until the National Association of Realtors was formed did they begin to standardize you know a lot of the uh, the industry. But still, culturally speaking, different communities across the country have different mentalities, different cultures, and different people. And it's created this disjointed, uh, you know, program uh, of, of selling real estate. And, uh, you know, today it's, it's multiplied by the fact that it's still easy to get into the industry and we cannot uh, get, uh, you know, quality people, uh, you know, coming into the industry more and more so. I myself would like to see it to where there is at least a four-year degree of some sort uh, required before you uh, get into the business, but not common. Uh, again, the industry is mostly localized. A lot of people who know the community, uh, you know, control the community. You have your local association of realtors. And it's not uncommon to go from one state or even one city to another, and you hear a totally different uh, lingo of, of, of real estate uh, language. And so just uh, how real estate has uh, developed with the, uh, the advent of the internet, uh, some things have gotten standardized in terms of, of lingo and, and practices, but real estate still remains a very localized, uh, controlled uh, market by you know, local influencers. Just another reason why the business has become you know, so disjointed. Now, when you're working in real estate, I want to get back to the different types of lead sources to sustain you as a real estate agent. The internet lead is the most uh, common lead to get, but it's also the worst quality lead to get. And I would probably say that's true for probably any industry out there because it's simple for somebody to put in a name or address, or especially if you put up some type of barrier to read an article uh, or to get some type of statistics or you know free program. That's all great for email building lists and may you know over time as you build that up will do, you know turn into a more lucrative venture but every one that comes in is is probably not going to amount to anything and so you got to let email lists build up over time so internet leads uh, you know low quality uh, lead I would turn away a lot of those and focus more so on sign calls and also on referrals referrals are the best type of lead that you can get and you know that comes back to uh, you know the power of relationships that we talk about on this uh, program a number of times and the more the more people that you know and the more you know uh, times that your name is passed around you become known as an influencer in that marketplace and so you as a real estate agent should be focusing on getting listings marketing yourself as an expert in a community and then getting your sign up and creating some type of brand around yourself with some type of niche or some type of you know site or something that sets you out and makes you unique but I don't advise that you make it corny or too playful because real estate is a, uh, you know, it's, it's people's most valuable possession and it's most valuable investment that most people will make in, the, uh, in their lifetime. And so it's important that you treat their product uh, or that the, treat their home, I should say, uh, with respect and with courtesy. And so somebody doesn't want to hire somebody in, you know, in some goofy outfit or you know, with goofy colored hair to sell their home. They want people to still be professional in selling their home. So prevent, present yourself in a professional manner and to, uh, to get yourself 
a brand that is developed. Now, if you live on a beach community or you live, uh, you know, somewhere with a certain, you know, area has a certain reputation, then you want to identify with the community. You'll see a lot of, you know, beach brokers that will show up uh, to listing appointments and, you know, uh, in shorts and in flip flops. And that's, you know, that's expected over there. But if you're in, you know, you know, at metro areas, New York City or Tampa Bay, Miami or major metros, you should show up to listing appointments in professional wear and more and more agents these days are not showing up in professional wear and it's uh, giving you the ones you do an advantage when you wear you know professional outfit it establishes you as an authority figure it makes you seem elevated to the client that you're talking to in the professional setting and it just you know makes them feel like they're dealing with somebody who knows how to sell and will sell their home for the most amount of money. And I think this is an excellent uh, area for many, especially men out there, to take advantage of the uh, the poor quality presentation that uh, many uh, professionals uh, present themselves uh, with today. Simply just putting on a three-piece suit, which is traditional, with a tie and showing up to uh, listing appointments will give yourself a uh, credibility and advantage over the agents that uh, do not show uh, up in professional attire. So take advantage of that. Present yourself properly and you will score more listings. And again, listing agents are what staying in the business. Buyer agents come and go throughout the business, but listing agents sustain themselves because they become associated with the community. Their signs are up in the yard so they develop more buyer leads, which then enables them to build out a team to give those buyer leads to. And as a listing agent, you get to the point where you don't even want to work buyer leads anymore because buyer leads are uh, one, uh, you know, a lot of times do not convert. Uh, a lot of buyer aid, buyers themselves will use multiple uh, agents as they search for homes. And that's a challenge and a large reason why a lot of real estate agents do not stay in the business. They end up getting frustrated out of the business because of the behavior of buyers in the marketplace. And we'll talk about that when we come back from the break about how buyers and the behavior of the buyers in the marketplace is influencing the higher commissions that you as a seller pay because the community and the real estate agents have allowed it through the practice of real estate over the last hundred years. So I'll explain that more when we come back from the break. So you're currently listening to the Real Estate Edition of That Business Show 2.0. New episodes each weekday or each Thursday at 7 a.m. on thatbusinessnetwork.com, available on demand on iTunes and on YouTube. So we'll be back in a moment. Hi, welcome to Yeagers. We just want to take a minute and show you what we're all about. Uh, at Yeagers, our primary business is hardwood flooring, although we are remodelers for kitchen, bath, and general construction. We operate a fleet of shop-at-home vans that have all the flooring-type products, hardwood flooring, laminate flooring, tiles, stone, what have you. So we're able to come out first with products in our vehicles and take a look at the setting, how the colors will work, and then to be able to come up with some options and ideas for you. If that's not good enough, we have a large distribution center that we inventory product and have a nice display area.
Jackie Skelton from JR World Travel here. If you travel, you need a licensed professional travel consultant, not a computer. Your licensed professional consultant can get you more for your time and your money. Value for your money and experience, not marketing salesmanship. When you're sick, you call the doctor. When you need legal advice, you call an attorney. So the next time you want to go on any type of travel, call your licensed professional travel consultant who actually represents you. We specialise in group travel, family reunions, weddings, to escorting large groups or making special arrangements for the disabled. Please call 844 249 0190. We are a full service travel consultancy offering worldwide concierge service. Air, land, sea, rivers, resorts, locally, nationally and internationally. Remember that number, 844 249 0190. Hey, welcome back to the Real Estate Edition of That Business Show 2.0. I'm your host, uh, Jamie Maloney, and again, I want to be your resource for buying or selling uh, real estate anywhere in the country. If you're in Tampa Bay, I can help you out personally, or if you're in another uh, area of the country, I can help you out through our relocation and our referral uh, services. So get in touch with me. Thathomevaluation.com will get you over a free home valuation and thathomesearch.com if you're looking to buy a home. And you can always learn more about myself over at jamiemaloney.com, which is now the uh, real estate uh, site dedicated uh, to my real estate practice, which uh, differs from thatbusinessnetwork.com, which is the show's site. So it's talking about how buyers are influencing higher commission rates in that last segment and how buyers frustrate a lot of real estate agents out of the business. One of, another reason that you want to become a listing agent is because a listing agent has a contract with the seller and then the seller can't go and get three different agents to sell their home unless they do an open listing, which is another talking point. But, you know, traditionally speaking, they're going to have a signed listing agreement. Listing agreements typically range from three to six months. But during that time, that seller cannot sell the home through another broker. And so you're going to be guaranteed a commission in the event of the sale, even if that seller goes out and sells it to the next door neighbor that they could have sold without you. And so with that contract, it gives a listing agent an advantage over a buyer agent. A buyer agent rarely has a contract with a buyer to show them homes. Now they should, but they don't. There are buyer brokerage agreements out there. You can list a buyer the same as listing a home. The only thing is most buyers are not going to sign that agreement because they don't want to be tied down to one real estate agent and they know that that is not the common practice uh, in real estate. And so a buyer will call you up or you'll pick them up through an internet lead or you know a sign call or some type of source. They'll say, yeah, I'm looking to buy a home and you'll go out there and you'll spend a couple of weekends and several hours throughout the week showing them homes, giving them information, only to be frustrated when they, one, don't qualify for a mortgage, or two, they see uh, a sign on the side of the road, call it listing agent, listing agent writes the contract, you know, within, you know, the 24-hour time period and, and you're out of the loop. And, you know, three, that, you know, you're just, they just disappear from you altogether. And so all those reasons right there get you a zero commission. And it can be very uh, frustrating and costly for real estate agents to uh, sustain themselves in the business when they're not converting the buyers. So listings are guaranteed to convert given that you sell a home within that time frame, but buyers are not. And so what you're doing in this business is supplement. So many uh, agents um, are being supplemented with higher commissions to offset the losses that they incur by driving these buyers around and the buyers not performing. And so really the way real estate should have developed is that you want to see a home, okay, then you're going to pay, uh, you know, X number of dollars to see that home or you're going to put a certain deposit down and I'll work with you. And that money will be refunded back to you when you buy a home. If you don't buy a home, then that money goes to the uh, real estate agent as compensation for their time loss. Think of an attorney. You can't even get an email from an attorney or talk to them for two or three minutes without being charged. Real estate agents are disseminating you know, the same information on the real estate level that an attorney is disseminating at whatever legal practice or, or, or area of business that they're practicing. So why is it that attorneys are charging $400 an hour but you know, real estate agents are getting screwed left and right. It's because the business of real estate has allowed it. The real estate brokers in competition with one another have allowed it. And that's because so many uh, people 
that are not highly educated and are just so competitive to just get something to, to stay busy as it is has allowed this practice uh, to, uh, to develop. And again, so if all these buyers were converting or if, if, if buyer agents were actually getting paid some type of compensation when they were showing homes and you, the seller, would be paying lower commissions. So those higher commissions that everybody complains about, why does it cost you know, to sell $15,000 to sell my home that's only $100,000? Well, we gotta market it, we gotta do this and that. that a lot of that's BS. The, the profit margins on real estate are very, very, very strong. The typical real estate agent can easily make 50 and 60% uh, of profit margins on, uh, on the sale of real estate, even higher, uh, depending on which uh, brokerage uh, that they're at. And so, especially with the internet today, marketing costs have come down substantially. If you're a, a real estate agent marketing a million dollar home or something to understand, that's a whole different segment of real estate. Yeah, you gotta pay for magazine ads and overseas marketing, and that's, that's a whole nother subsect. But why is it that you pay 6% to sell a home for $200,000, and you pay 6% to sell a home for $300,000, but to sell the $300,000 home, it's more expensive to sell. I'm not going to do anything differently for the $200,000 or the $300,000 home. It's going to be, you know, put in the multiple listing service. It's going to go out to the 500 websites. It's going to get the same treatment, but the person who has the higher price point home is going to pay more. And so just another reason why real estate has uh, developed, uh, you know, so, uh, so, uh, so differently from many other industries and, and in such a way that really doesn't make sense. And so, but it is a benefit uh, to myself as a real estate agent. It's a benefit to other real estate agents that are out there, but to the consumers, it doesn't make sense. And this is all stuff that I spoke about even before I became a real estate uh, agent. Uh, but, you know, it's the way it is. Uh, the uh, real estate uh, groups are very uh, powerful. Uh, the lobbying groups are very powerful. They have tremendous influence over the marketplace. And, uh, you know, that's just the way that it is. But buyers not performing and wasting real estate agents' times is basically on the real estate agent first, and then it's on the buyer too for being a waste, uh, wasteful consumer and being a wasteful uh, consumer in any type of marketplace is, is not good for that industry. But real estate agents who are working with buyers need to be more diligent with who they're working with and how they go about working with them. They should be making them sign buyer brokerage agreements. They should be making them get fully loan approved before buying a home. That way they don't have those situations where they've spent three, three, four weeks showing homes and even more. I've heard a lot of uh, horror stories out there from real estate agents only to find out they didn't even qualify for a mortgage to begin with. And so what do I mean by getting fully loan approved? You say, well, I got pre-qualified. I got a letter right here. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about full loan approval whereby you have submitted all of your documents to the underwriting, your W-2s, your tax returns, any other things, alimony statements, whatever costs uh, and incomes that you have as a, as a buyer to the uh, loan officer that is going to be uh, doing your mortgage. That way you know uh, that you are fully qualified for the mortgage. And it's also an advantage to you as a buyer because when you go to the marketplace and you make an offer on a home, if you come to the marketplace with just a pre-qualification letter and you're up against cash offers, which in Tampa Bay, 40, 50% of the market is cash, you look very weak. And a lot of sellers know, or at least as advised by their agents, that those pre-qualification letters are nothing more than people calling the loan officer, telling them what they make and telling them what their expenses are, but not verifying it and pulling a credit report and then getting the, getting the show on the road. Very, very, very poor way of practicing uh, real estate. And that is also more so on the uh, loan officers and the mortgage brokers that are out there. They should be demanding that real, I mean, buyers are getting full loan approvals be before signing their names to the letters. And yes, inside the letters, it says, you know, the you know, information here is an estimate of, you know, what they can afford. They, the documents have not been verified. And, you know, the typical pre-qualification letter discloses all that. But it's never been beat into people what that really means. What that really means is, I don't know if this guy's going to qualify or not. He's got a decent credit score. He says he's making this, but by the time he turns in his W-2s and, oh, you might have forgot to tell me about the, the child support and the alimony payments, which, you know, I didn't think that counted or I didn't think to tell you about the, you know, this uh, lien that I have and things like that. And so all that stuff can impact the ability of a buyer to purchase a home and then the real estate agent is out their time. And so why do real estate agents work with buyers, you know, when in unsure situations? It's because they're not trained and they're not taught to stand up to buyers to say, no, it's not, we're not gonna go out and look at homes this weekend because you're not ready. 
you need to get qualified for a mortgage. We need to get you committed to buying a home. Well, I'll just go to another broker. And that's usually what will happen. But, and then you as an agent or the agents will say, well, you know, I don't want to, you don't want to, they want to please. They want to be a pleaser. And in real estate, it's very bad practice to have that mentality of wanting to be a pleaser when you're representing buyers because they will run you to death and they will not end up compensating you anything. And it affects the entire industry and it's just bad practice for everybody. And the consumers out there will one day become a seller and they will be paying for that type of behavior through higher commissions on the home. And so that's just the way real estate is. But as a buyer agent, you want to secure the buyers with a buyer brokerage agreement, with a full loan approval and a commitment from them that they are going to purchase a home within a certain two to three month time frame. You don't want to get a buyer who says, eh, you don't want to change my mind, you know. You can't hold them to anything, even if you got a buyer brokerage agreement and even if you got a full loan approval. If they change their mind or their situation changes, there's nothing you can do about that. So that's just the way real estate is. Uh, and that's why I always advise if you want to sustain yourself in real estate, you become a listing agent because sellers are committed to you through a listing agreement and you're going to get compensated and you have the opportunity to earn the other side of the commission if you score the uh, or if you pick up uh, or source the buyer yourself so again a lot of good information on this program uh, talking about how to become a real estate agent, how to sustain yourself in business, the different types of lead sources uh, that are out there. Uh, but the bottom line is it's just like any other business out there. Good pra business practices will always trump poor business practices. Real estate is no different. So again, if I can help you in any way buying or selling a home, uh, it doesn't matter where you're at in the uh, country, uh, please take advantage of my services. Thathomevaluation.com will get you a free home valuation. That homesearch.com will get you uh, help with buying a home wherever it is you're in the country. And you can find out more about myself at jamiemaloney.com. Again, 10 years in the business, over 1,600 homes sold, specializing in the sale of uh, bank home distressed uh, uh, properties. But it can help you in any area of real estate, both residential and commercial as well. We'll start covering more and more commercial real estate topics coming up here in the future of the Real Estate Edition of That Business Show. So again, new episodes of the Real Estate Edition air each Thursday at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then each weekday morning, we air regular programs of That Business Show. Again, talking with many different professionals from across many industries. And we'd love to hear your story too. If you're an entrepreneur, business owner, political or community leader, just go to TBS Interview dot com for how to come onto the program. So you've been listening to that business show 2.0, the real estate edition with your host Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business.